Hey everyone, it's Joanne Molinaro, the Korean vegan. Today, I'm going to show you how to make the best chocolate cake you've ever eaten. And I'm going to tell you about how I went from this to this in just four years. So stick around for a slice of cake and part two to my running story. <music> Earlier, I shared with you all how I went from running three quarters of a mile with a walking break in between to running 13.1 miles, which is a half marathon in just a few years. And it was probably one of the most extraordinary things that I could have ever imagined doing. And as I crossed the finish line into my mother's arms, I knew without a doubt that I would register for the Chicago Marathon in the fall of the following year. I knew I wanted to run a full marathon even before I started training for the half marathon, but I figured it was best to see and prove to myself that I could run a half marathon before I went ahead and signed up for a 26.2 mile race. So I registered for the Chicago Marathon and I spent almost an entire year training for it. And before we talk too much about the training process, I wanted to spend a little bit of time explaining how I became obsessed with the marathon after being that girl who fainted in gym class when she was told she had to run 20 minutes in a row. So this is me at my very first marathon. As a spectator, it was the 2014 Bank of America Chicago Marathon and my then boyfriend, now husband Anthony, and his brother were both running in it. We were still a relatively new couple at the time. In fact, I think it was just a few days before the race that he started calling me his girlfriend. And I remember I brought my camera out there because I wanted to take photographs of this kind of amazing event. As I said, it was my first marathon and I had seen nothing like it. I mean, tens of thousands of people running this race and hundreds of thousands of people clamoring on the streets with their cowbells and their signs and their rattling toys and their dogs and their babies cheering these people on. And I remember thinking to myself, my God, these people are literally crazy. Why would anyone voluntarily subject their bodies to this sort of unfathomable torture for 26.2 miles? Why would people voluntarily sign up to do something that legend has it causes death? But even as I said these things to myself, as I took photos of some of the world's fastest long distance runners, as I saw scores and scores of runners and running teams slide past me, as I heard the cheers of their family members and their friends all around me, I knew that I was participating in something special, even if it was only as a spectator. And I really loved it. So that night, uh, in celebration of Anthony's big run, we decided to meet at a pizza place and his entire family came. Yes, it was my first time meeting Anthony's parents. Anthony's mother is one of those persons who thinks more about everyone else's comfort before she thinks of her own. She goes out of her way to make sure you feel not nervous not uncomfortable. And she did that with me. I think she could immediately sense how scared I was to meet Anthony's family. Anthony's father was much more guarded. And I remember thinking as I peered over my soda cup to kind of peek at him, how obvious it was why Anthony Hero worshipped him. He was very strong. He was very you know, forceful. And he had this presence about him. And yeah, he made me really nervous. But then I looked into his eyes and he had these beautiful round eyes, just like Anthony. And they were so kind. They were so inviting and they were so warm. After dinner, he kissed me on the cheek as we said goodbye. And I remember thinking to myself, 
Wow, I don't believe in love at first sight. I certainly didn't fall in love at first sight with Anthony, but maybe, just maybe, I came about as close as I could with his dad. Over the next year, I got to know Robert as well as I could. I spent a lot of time talking to him about his son, about music, about Italy, whatever. Anthony's father was an immigrant from Rome, and starting in his, I would say, late 20s, early 30s, he started running a lot. I think Robert ran probably at least 25 marathons over the course of his life, and he always had lovely advice for a newbie runner like me. He told me when I needed to let my body rest and when I should think about pushing my body. He talked to me about my shoes. He talked to me about my running posture. He talked to me about my gait. He was an endless source of encouragement and information, and like so many members of Anthony's family, he was a total running nerd. I remember when I ran my first 8K, the Shamrock Shuffle, I was so excited to go back to Anthony's parents' home to show off my medal to his dad. And I remember as I walked into the kitchen of Anthony's parents' home, there was a tray of just the most beautiful, humongous blueberry muffins I had ever seen. Apparently, Anthony's father had baked them that morning as a surprise for the racers when they came home. And that, more than anything in the world, is probably the best way to describe my joint obsession of running and baking, both of which were inspired by Anthony's father. And as Robert continued to cheer me on from the sidelines, I grew more and more encouraged to run more and more races from 5K to 10K to 10 miles. And I would be lying if I said that I wasn't incredibly motivated to sign up for that half marathon because of Robert. Here's the truth. You can't fail at something that you don't even want. And I remember as I was standing around that first Chicago Marathon in 2014, I said to myself, well, only crazy people run marathons. I would never want to run marathons. But to be honest, I think part of me wouldn't give myself permission to want to run a marathon because then I couldn't fail at it. And talking to Robert that year was what gave me the audacity to even want to run not just a half marathon, but a full marathon. Yes, I wanted to do it to prove to myself that I could do it. I wanted to do it to prove to everybody that I could do it. I wanted to do it because I wanted Robert to be proud of me. While Anthony was training for his next marathon in 2015, his father grew very ill and he passed away later that fall, just a few days before the Chicago Marathon. One of the last things he wished for was that his sons still run the Chicago Marathon, that they make sure that the funeral arrangements didn't conflict with that, and they honored that wish. They buried their medals with Robert. The following year, I registered and raced the Naperville Half Marathon. I remember thinking about Robert as I crossed that finish line. I remember thinking how bittersweet it was that he couldn't be there on the sidelines to cheer for me with his son and the rest of my family. But I also remember thinking the big celebration isn't due yet because I still needed to conquer the big one, the full marathon. I'll save the story of running my very first marathon for my next video on my running story. But I will tell you, I did run the 2017 Chicago Marathon, all 26.2 miles of it. And I had a dream the day after. I dreamt that Robert and I were in a car together driving and I was in the back seat and I reached over and I put my arms around his shoulders and I said, look, Robert, I did it. I ran the marathon. And I like to believe that he saw me crossing that finish line. Maybe we sort of crossed it together. 
Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked watching me make chocolate cake while telling you about my running story, please hit that like button and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future Korean vegan videos. Have a lovely day.